I'm going to go through installing Windows 7 Professional OEM as a virtual machine using VMware and downgrade rights. OK, I've got an Optiplex 7050 with a Windows 10 Pro OEM license. So you see Windows 10 Pro Insider Preview, version 1903 is pre-installed. And you see that it's got 7th generation Intel processor, meaning Windows 7 Pro can't be installed directly on the system. So if I launch the program read write everything and go to access and then ACPI tables, I see I have this SLIC tab, which can be used for Windows 7 OEM pre-installation. So in order to install Windows 7, we actually need to use a virtual machine because the hardware is too new and there's no driver support for it. So a virtual machine creates emulated hardware that we can install Windows 7 on. And in essence, the host PC, Windows 10, just sees the Windows 7 virtual machine as a single window. Okay, so for the virtual machine, we need VMware. So I went ahead and installed that. And what we need to do is go to player and then file and then new virtual machine. So I'm going to select, I will install the operating system later. I'm going to select Microsoft Windows and Windows 7. And I'm just going to change the location because I've got more space on this D drive than on the C drive. So I'm just going to make a new folder called Win 7 VM. So just make sure you know what your location is. And then select Next. And we can customize the hardware further. So it's sometimes useful just to up the number of processors to at least two. And it's sometimes also useful to up the RAM. We'll also need to load the ISO file. Now, if you load the ISO file in an earlier window, it will auto detect it's Windows 7 and go through an easy install. Unfortunately, the easy install tends to change Windows 7 English to be Windows 7 English US and I want it to be Windows 7 English UK. Okay, so I want to open up the location of the virtual machine now. And there's one file called the virtual machine configuration file. And we want to open this in Notepad or Notepad++. And it's got the configuration settings. And we essentially want to add these four lines. So the first line will change the bias to be a UFI bias, a virtual UFI bias. And the additional lines will port the OEM system locked pre-installation from the host to the virtual PC. So the Windows 7 Pro installation in the virtual hardware will see this SLIC version 2.1 and we can use it to perform downgrade rights in the virtual machine. Okay, so if it's the first time you've launched a virtual machine, it should begin the Windows setup automatically. If not, it'll tell you to press any key to boot from the CD or DVD, which is the actual ISO. So what you need to do is click into the virtual machine with your your mouse and then press any key to do that. Okay, so just go ahead and begin to install. Select your language options and it's virtualized hardware. So it'll recognize the keyboard and mouse and so on. And you'll be able to see the screen. And when you get to the virtual drive, just select next and you'll install Windows 7 on it. So it'll go ahead and restart, check the performance. So you'll type in your name and then your computer name. You can type in a password if you want, but there's not really that much point because you'll have a password for your normal Windows 10. Skip the product key, use the Windows update settings. And if you 
have the virtual ethernet connected then you'll be connected to the internet so you can just select home or work network alternatively you can set the virtual machine up without an ethernet and it will never be connected to the internet this is perhaps wise because windows 7 reaches end of life soon so to the bottom it will tell you you need to install tools so go ahead and click this and then this will load the tools as a virtual CD or DVD drive. So go ahead and install them. So the tools are essentially the system drivers. So you've got very basic system drivers for the virtualized hardware. And the VMware tools will install the proper drivers, which allows you to see the video, for instance and it allows you to resize the VM and the video will automatically adjust for that and will also allow you to drag and drop from Windows 10 to Windows 7. So if we go to start, right click the start button and select properties, we see Windows 7 isn't activated. If I had used a Dell Windows 7 Pro reinstallation ISO instead, Windows 7 would be automatically activated because that ISO automatically applies OEM system locked pre-installation. If I launch read write everything on the virtual PC, I can see this like 2.1 has transferred across. So what we want to do is copy the OEM cert file collection over and extract it. So we know we've got a Dell and we've got Windows 7 Professional. So we copy this OEM folder directly to the C drive of the virtual PC. And then it's just a case of right clicking this batch file and selecting run as administrator. So it installs the certificate for OEM system locked pre-installation and then it installs the generic OEM system locked pre-installation key. So this is the key used for every single Dell shipped with Windows 7 Professional as a factory image. And if we go to start and right click computer and select properties, we see Windows is activated and the product ID contains OEM 899. And this means we know it's activated using OEM system locked pre-installation. Now, as the Microsoft Media is from 2011, it's worthwhile installing standalone updates. Now, unfortunately, the standalone updates take longer to install than the actual Windows 7 installation does. So the first one you want to install is the service stack. And once you've done that, you can install the convenient roll up. So the convenience roll up is essentially Windows 7 Service Pack 2 and all but name. And because it's a service pack, it takes ages to install. So Microsoft didn't call it a service pack simply because they didn't want to extend the life of Windows 7. So unfortunately, this convenient roll-up doesn't contain the prerequisite updates for Internet Explorer 11. And the so-called standalone installer for Internet Explorer 11 doesn't contain these four updates. If you're connected to the internet, it will download these four updates. And if you're offline, it will say it cannot download these updates. So we need to manually install these four updates. And once we've installed these four updates, um, we need to go ahead and restart the computer. Okay, so now we can go ahead and install Internet Explorer 11. 
and we'll need to select continue to close Windows Explorer. Okay, it'll ask us to restart, we'll restart later. And we'll install the latest security rollup. So at current, it's this security rollup. However, next month there'll be another one and then the month after that there'll be another one and so on and so forth. And you only need to install the latest one. Bear in mind that Windows 7 reaches end of life in January 2020. So the last security rollup should be the one in January 2020. Okay, so once we've done this, we'll need to go ahead and restart. And the next thing I'm going to install is the Microsoft.NET Framework because many applications require this. So accept the license agreement and then select install and it'll go ahead and install. So we can select finish now. And that's has got Windows installed. So let's just check that we're using a UFI boot. So let's check that we're using the GPT prediction scheme. So let's open administrative tools and then go to computer management and then storage. Okay, so we see here that it says EFI. So we are using a UFI boot. And if we go to volume, we see that we're using the GPT partition scheme. Okay, so we can resize the window of the virtual machine. And as I said, for Windows 10, it just treats the virtual machine as a window. Okay, so if you're not needing to use the internet on the virtual machine, it's recommended to disable the network adapter. So you want to disable it on the current session and also any time that you start the virtual machine up. As mentioned, Windows 7 reaches end of life in January 2020. And as a consequence, it's not recommended to connect it to the internet. So we can have a look at the folder of the virtual machine. And what we can do is just copy it to make a backup. So let's just rename the folder with backup and if you wanted to launch this you would just right click the virtual machine configuration file and select open with VMware player.